What's good, fam? It's your boy Isaiah Anderson Jr. from Build, and we're getting ready to kick off our 2022, uh, yeah, barbershop series where we get it in, we get some conversation going, and we give some dialogue. We've been doing it for a number of years now, but we back, and it's about to go down. I want to kick it over to my man Dre real quick before I give you our topic for today. What's going on? This is Dre with Brothers United Leadership Development. Happy to be here at Axe on Stage uh, to film our 2022 Barbershop Series. I want to give a little bit of history about the Barbershop Series. When we started in 2013, you know, we decided we wanted to go out to where the community was having the conversations, especially we focused on issues that impact black men and boys. So we wanted to go into the barbershops to have conversations where black men and boys and women in the community are just having those, those types of conversations. So we've been doing this for a number of years. COVID kind of sidetracked us. And so we had to get innovative this year. So we're happy to partner with Acts on Stage as well as Dancing in the Rain Media to bring this uh, uh, session series of the Barbershop series to y'all. Uh, yeah, thanks. Yeah, okay, so I'm back, check me. Today's topic, we're gonna be talking about Black Men United. Pros and cons, what does that look like? Uh, what does it feel like? Uh, and we joined by some, some, some family members here, some community activists, some, you know, some cats that have been in the community doing their thing for a good while. Um, so we're going to let them introduce themselves. I am LaShawn Hunter. All right, what's up? I'm Ed Hampton. What up? It's your boy, DJ Uncle Guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, now you see who we got here today to join us. My man, uh, DJ Nice guy in the building we got my man cuddy with sean hunter in the building and we got the serious pro black brother you hear me pro to the black ed in the building so man we're going to talk about <laughs> black men united um what does that look like um you know there was a there was a song out uh late 90s or so early 2000s somewhere in there jason's lyric was the movie that came out and the song you will know uh, was uh, produced by D'Angelo, but had 40 artists, 40 male artists, join in to sing a song called You Will Know. And uh, they, they sent all the proceeds to different organizations that would help people in the black community. Um, but it's like, for me, it's like right now, like if black men united, not just singers, not just, but all of us got together, right? What would that look like? What would that feel like? What are the pros and cons, if there are any? cons, you know what I'm saying? Um, so I'm just going to kick it off with Cuddy real quick. LaShawn, you know, what, what is that Black Men United? What, is that, what does that picture look like? What is that, you know? I mean, really just coming together no matter, you know, your background. I mean, a lot of times you're going to connect with, you know, what, you know, somebody was brought up, you know, doing, you know, whatever it is. And, it's, it, it, and then it comes to like, you know, connecting with with somebody else that's been through the same thing. Yeah. So it's like, you know, you just come together and and really just, you know, have the same, you know, mindset of what you're trying to do and just, like, connect and, you know, just be a whole. You know, that's really what it is, really. It's just coming together and, and um, yeah, just, Come together, come together and just sharing different experiences, you know, and, and you're going to, a lot of times you're going to have the same experiences, which which makes you connect with somebody else. Like, oh, yeah, me too. You don't know until you know. Why not? So that's, you know, that's the thing about it is not knowing until you know. That's what surprises you and you're like, oh, man, he's been through the same thing I've been through. So, like, okay, wh what can we do to come together and, and be great and change some things that's going on in your community and and just life itself so that's that's one of, yeah that's the thing that's that i see that's what's up appreciate that comment cut now i'm gonna go to ed real quick because ed a lot of people don't know right you're a young cat but you 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 bit of a black history historian bro you you like to get it in deep you you almost huey p newton type malcolm x type um, so, man, tell the people what, what, what your mindset is around Black Men United and what it looks like when we come together. Um, man, it's, it's, you know, it's hard. It's a hard thing to really say because, you know, Black people, we're not a monolith. Then it's like, you know, over the last 
50, 100 years, you know, we've been, you know, we, we all done migrated from the South and, and um, we were also poor too. So it's like, we didn't have the resources to even be building with each other and connecting with each other. So because of that, it's like, you know, we become isolated and new, new cultures from those cities and those states pop up. Like, you know, people got different accents, people mm -hmm. have different conditions. You know what I'm saying? There's more black people down South and Midwest, New York, even LA than there is up here in Seattle. So right. it's like, it's like so many different factors that, you know, um, um, guide, you know, our unity, you know what I'm saying? And disunity, you know? So, I mean, nothing for work, but, <laughs> but, um, um, yeah. Um, and then on top of that, you know, we've been warred on this whole time, you know, mass incarcerated to keep this, um, prison industrial complex going and slave industrial complex, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, you know, a lot of, a lot of, you know, a lot of black men aren't necessarily like fighting against it no more. It's more of fi mm. falling into the trap. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And even if they're, even if, when they get out, it's like now it's a bragging thing or a rite of passage to be in prison and different shit. It's like just a part of our culture. Yeah. And it's like our ancestors from when they were stolen from West Africa, um, they were fighting. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people be like, oh, um, we, our, the people, our, our people over in West Africa sold us. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, a lot of them were still fighting, you know yeah. what I'm saying, and being enslaved. And even the ones who were selling us, once they, once, once they, once the economy started hitting different out there, and because a, a mass of people are leaving and uh, all these Europeans are coming in, they were trying to figure out another medium to be trading with the Europeans with. But they were like, the Europeans were like, no, we, we got a market that we you need to keep meeting right. this quota to get black folks out to, um, um, out to the States and mainly like black men, definitely black women too, but mainly black men. Like when it comes to the European slave trade, they were focused on men cause they needed power. When it came to the Arab slave trade, they were more focused on women cause, and they would castrate, they would mm. castrate black men mm. and keep, and, um, keep the women as like sex slaves and all types of other crazy stuff. So it's, it's so many dynamics. And when I, when I think of black men united, like, you know, I'm a Pan-Africanist, so I think of the world, you know, I think about black men all over the world, African descent people all over the world and African men on the continent. So what does that actually look like to reconnect with, you know, black men on the continent who are going through the same stuff as us, that's what's you know, up. but speaking different languages. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. That's, that's deep, man. Like that you going deep, deep. Yeah, he did. When you said, <laughs> when you said they're going through the same thing, but we speak different languages, that's deep in the sense that because I don't understand you means I'm disconnected, right? And we've gone through the same thing, but we have two different types of language. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna throw it over to Dre real quick, you know. Yeah, I feel like, you know, that's what BUILD is about, Brothers United and Leadership Development. So it's, you know, first I think what it looks like is we gotta have time and energy to spend building relationships. If we don't have that and we just focus on, you know, it's touch on this a little bit like capitalism if we focus on capitalism we just get on the the hamster wheel and just you know you guys spending so much time trying to get money to pay mm -hmm. your bills and buy your kids things and holidays and all this other stuff and we think we just need to have time and resources to really just slow down and spend time with each other as black men get to know each other and that's what we've tried to <clears throat> do with with build um, so that's how I kind of see it it working or what it would look like is really just folks really being intentional on building relationships. I mean, Ed talked about the slave trade all the way up to, you know, gangs in the 90s. All these things are things that have been put in place that we didn't necessarily design, but we engaged, we, mm -hmm. we were the uh, victims or, or the subset, you know, so and then movies and social media and all this other things tells us how we're supposed to act. So we've been taught not to trust, not to, not to rock with each other, not to be accountable uh, to each other and so on and so forth. So. Uh, we have to put as much time and energy that they're putting in to teach us not to rock with each other, not to be united, you know, and have this, um, we're really tribal people, black folks in general, are tribal yeah. people, right? Folks of color in general are tribal people. So we're really supposed to be together and spending time with each other, sharing stories, learning from one another. We have a lot of resources and a lot of our resources and the skills that we have individually don't even necessarily be money. We have access to a lot of money too, but 
Uh, but the problem is we don't have a lot of trust, right. a lot of respect, a lot of accountability, and that it takes time yeah, yeah. To, to build that trust, right? It takes time, and that's why we try to offer these types of things, you know, the barbershop series, so we can have conversations and share, and now we're spending off and doing a salon shop series to so give women an opportunity, because as we started, when we talked, when we started, Bill, it was like, hey, we're going to focus on issues that impact black men and boys, but we know anything that impact us impact our Absolutely. women, right? But Absolutely. we just feel like we got to fix home first, get our stuff together, get our core, get our relationships together. And now we're at the point where we're starting to push some of those resources out into the community. So I feel like what we've done and other organizations have done that really focus on relationships, some that come to mind is like Village of Hope yeah. and those types of organizations that really focus on community and bringing people together and having, having conversations and just breaking bread um, is really what's going to get us to working together. If we think we're just going to come together on some initiative or whatever, I don't think that's really some transactional thing. I don't think it's really going to happen. Now you may be able to get the transactional things after you got the relationships in place, but if it's only we're coming together to solve voting rights or yeah. or whatever it is, and it's just we're just coming together on whatever this issue is, once they, or education or police brutality, then it's not really a long-term relationship. So that, that's what I think. I think everything's rooted in relationships. That's what's up, and you and you're heavy on that, Dre, and you've been heavy on it for a long time. That relationships are the foundation and should be the foundation of what we do and how we do it. Uh, which brings me to my man, nice guy. Um, yes, listen, this cat, um, I can speak from experience, my own personal experience, that guy is definitely about bringing people together, bringing organizations together, um, just doing it big. And you've been doing it for a long time. You and your brother own uh, one of the first black record stores in Seattle, you know what I'm saying? Um, and so, yeah, so if you can just touch on, man, just some of the work that you continue to do. He's a living relic. You believe that. I'm a relic. I remember the gumbo, I the that, gumbo mix. Oh, the gumbo nice mix. Nice guy's been around, man. Can I get another gumbo mix? R&D, though. No. Hey, I think we're going off the topic. The topic is... <laughs> ARS. Man, just like you said, Zeke, we just, like you said, that's what this is all about, building. I was, I was groomed, prepped. Taught by OGs, taught by my mom, taught by my family to work together. It's smarter yeah. to work together. So I love to see us work together. I love to see us come together. Love to see it make it. And that's magic, like you say. You got the new and improved, got the seasoned vet, got the. Psh, that's a relic. <laughs> For real. I got more gray, but you know. It's a, it's a beautiful thing, like you say, man. It's a blessing to get a place, an environment where you can relax and communicate with the brothers, come together, build resources. And I just see it as a beautiful thing, man. That's right. it. I always been groomed, support black, be black, help black do this. So us coming together is a beautiful thing, but you know that negative side comes too. So, like so let's, said, trust. let's talk about that real quick, you know, and, and, and all of us have touched on parts of what causes that lack of trust or that lack of wanting to get involved because uh, I've been burned before. Uh, I, you know, I, people have heard me say some of my greatest moments since I've been in Seattle has been from people that look like me. Some of my worst moments have been with people that look like me. And so, you know, let's, so let's touch on that for a minute. What, what else causes, aside from, right, we, we were separated, right? Our languages were changed. And, and so we started doing that. Um, the fact that we're going through the same things with, you know, with different with different understandings. Um, so, Ed, I like, how do you feel about some of the, some of the negative aspects of all that? Um, well, I mean, because, you know, I grew up in the hood, you know, and, you know, um, things wasn't always sweet, but it's a trip coming into, you know, consciousness, being more aware of stuff, and going into these fields of around people who are in the movement and in nonprofits. And I find the same thing, you know mm. what I'm saying? That was going on, you know, in, in, yeah. in, lo in low class, poor black America, killing each other, selling dope, pimping all, you know what I'm saying? Like this. And it's like, I didn't expect it to be like that up here. Mm. So, um, I just had to highlight that, but, um, man, yeah. I, from, you know, being in both of those spaces, it just, it, it, it's really, it's really hard to say, you know what I'm saying? Like, I know trust is a, a definite thing, but I know that really 
it's emotions, you know? Yeah. Um, and a doc, Dr. Edwin Nichols, um, he, um, I had went to one of his um, workshops and he was saying that, you know, for, for black Arabs and Latinos, the highest value of the race is relationships. So when he, when he would go into prisons to talk to people, to talk to the brothers in there to f find out the different crimes that they were in there for, mm -hmm. it's like the crimes led from people being disrespected. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. that's, that's a, that was like a huge reason why we're mass incarcerated. You know what I'm saying? And it goes back to our history, you know what I'm saying? Of us not, of us being disconnected from our culture. So that's why I feel like, really feel like, you know, us really finding out about who, who we are and how we operate it, you know, uh, from the source, not from the branches of this tree. Cause we're always reacting to, you know, you know, if, if a police kill us, we, we come together on that. Yeah. And it's like, we need to come together before that. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? We need to be yeah. having, uh, uh, build black barbershop series in every city. You know what I'm saying? In every County, really, That's what's up. you feel me? Like people need to be already building. Cause it's like, then people come together around a very important, uh, uh, um, um, cause and nobody's even on the same page about what we should do about it. Or, or, or if they do get on the same page, you know, people got ulterior motives in, in, in their background and then let the wrong person get disrespected and that's your ass or you're canceled or, you know what I'm saying? There's some, some type of, it's going to happen to so, something's going to happen to literally just destroy and splinter and we're back in the same spot same again. Spot. And it's just a, it's, it's just a cycle that I see happening in like, like definitely in nonprofits, but in the hood too. Cause like when I was in, when I was in middle school, like it seemed like all of our gangs, like I'm from the central district. So it was like all of our gangs were, were more together. And then eighth grade hit and, and it was like the older cats got into it on some civil war shit, you know, in the central district. And it caused, it, it, it spread down to us and things have never been the same since, mm. you know, and that was 2008, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, and it's just, it, it's just splinter now. It's just click, 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 click. And it's like, all these people are the same. And I do see certain people that are trying to come back together and, and you know what I'm saying, be on the same page with stuff. And even coming with people from opposite gangs in the South and people are, so. are getting together and doing music and stuff. But it's like still these, 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 um, these just remnants from the past is called and the remnants from the past. And then it being exacerbated by the mat, the, 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 the music the that is, that is um, at the top, you yeah. know, all this stuff coming out of Chicago, it's just making the kids want to be more, you know, um, get, get their stripes off of killing or getting their stripes off of doing whatever, uh, illicit street shit, you know what I'm saying? And it's, yeah. So you, you touched on a, a serious point to me of disrespect, right? And when we, as a people start to feel like we've been disrespected, uh, I'll share this real quick. And Dre knows this. I've always touched on that of trust and that of knowing, right? Trust is literally something you have to do with people you don't know, right? Literally, you got to do trust is something you have to deal with, with people you don't know. If I don't know you, when you say, yo, man, I cut grass and I cut grass good. I'd be like, mm, uh, I don't know that. So if you're going to come cut my grass, I got to trust you're going to do a good job. Right. Feel me? Right. And now if you cut my grass two, three weeks, and my joint keep looking good. Now I know you can cut grass. So I don't have to trust anymore that you'll cut my grass good. I know you will. Yeah. But if you mess up my grass a month later, I'm like, wait a minute, I, I knew this cat could cut my grass, but now I got to trust him again. Right. So we as a people, we we and it, it all goes back to Dre saying that of relationships. Right. Relationships allow us to get to know people. Right. right? Yeah. I don't have to trust that guy's going to call me if he's got an event that he wants. I know guy will call me. Right. Sean is my cousin. I don't have to trust that he's going to call me if something go down in the family. I know he's going to call me. Right. Dre is my brother. It's like I know what this cat will do. So I don't really have to trust that they'll do it because I'm knowing it's when we get when we get in that unknowing. Yeah. That it starts to become an issue that we start to feel like, oh, you disrespected me, bro. For real. This is how we going to get down. Right. And also, Ed, you touched on a when they separated us and made us then have to use our own right to get what we get. When we finally come back together, it's like, now I got mine. Right. You were able to get yours. 
don't try to come at mine, right? Because we came at it, we got it, we both got it, but we both got it differently, right? And how I got mine is how I want to keep mine, and how you got yours is how you want to keep yours, right? And that's a lot of the mentality because we didn't have the opportunity to create those relationships of knowing one another, right? As opposed to having to trust. And, and you know, that old saying, if you're looking for dirt, you can walk in the cleanest spot. But if dirt is what you're looking for, dirt is what you'll find, right. no matter yeah. how clean it is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, really. So, Cuddy, where you at with this, man? I mean, yeah, it just, I mean, you're up. Like upbringing, like you don't know until you really know, you know what I mean? What's going on and and everything. And this is like, you know, once you like, you know, learn like through the years, it's like you just start knowing and then like getting better. If you want to be better, you start mm -hmm. knowing and, and then like growing. And it's like, man, I don't want to be like how I was last year. I don't want to be how I was growing up. Let me talk to some people so I'll know, like, like where they're at too you yeah. know what I'm saying like because I'm not trying to go <laughs> be where I was at so let me like you know reach out to my peoples and like the closest people to me are the people that I met through other people it's not people that I've known for a long time mm -hmm. and I'm thankful for it and I just I'm think every day I'll be like I didn't ask to be here I didn't, pray. <laughs> I didn't ask to be you know said be close to this person yeah and, and you know their experience, my experience, and it, it just click, and then it just blossoms, you know what I mean? And I think it just kind of just starts, like, where you just, you know, from the bottom up and just just growing and yeah. just knowing, like, I don't want to be <laughs> where I was and just, you know, just coming up from that. Well, that's what's – and, guys, so, you know, another term I use in Drake always reminds me that I, I, you know, I used to always say, in, a, in every aspect of life, no matter how old you get, no matter what status you get, no matter how much m amount of money you get, in every aspect of life, you are either going to be a student or a teacher, Yeah. right? Period. In every aspect, student or a teacher. And I always say, as a student, pay attention. Get the right information, right? Because yeah. as, a, as a student, you can get the wrong information. And then when you become a teacher, you give that wrong information. I always give the example, like anybody ever ask somebody for directions and they've been like, yeah, man, you, you go over here and you go over there. And it's like the wrong directions. You'd be like, if you didn't know, say you didn't know. <laughs> why you do that? Right. Why you don't get me lost? <laughs> right, right. Now, I didn't gave somebody else the wrong direction. You know what I'm saying? Um, but guy, bro, you've always been, you know, though you, you continue to be a student, you've always been a teacher in the community, bro. Just, so can you just speak to that? It's just uh, the way I was raised. Like I said, I was prepped, raised by OGs, by my mom, by my aunts, my family, the older older fools from the hood. Everybody just, it was just no jealousy. I think that's what mm. saved it. Just mm. no jealousy. Mm. I'm it not just jealous. Be real. Like, It'll be real. You do real. you, I'm going to do me. We're going to make it. That's yeah. good. You know, no we going to be all right. I was able to put my ego to the side. Mm. And it made it work, but a lot. I would can't always do that. say, "There's enough money to go around." <laughs> you would always Everybody say that. Eats. Everybody yeah. eats. Everybody eats. <laughs> Seattle would have been on the map if it, for a long time ago in the music industry, yeah. all the industries, if we could have just stuck together. Yeah, that's loved, the thing. Loved on each other the and music. Loved build. If we would have built together, mm. you know, like things I learned from the streets is the code of the streets. You know, so I learned the code. Then I learned from OGs the. You know the game of watch out for this, the flaws, the sa the pitfalls, everything. So, but it's just sad, like you said, it's just sad, like the negativity. It just could be, like yeah. me, me and my lady friend could be building a certain way. Isaiah and his wife could be building a certain way, and all it takes is my girl to say, Isaiah's been having a lot of. Uh, <laughs> and and my, you're exactly right. Huh? And then. But I've been knowing Zeke for years. Yeah. So I'm not even going to listen. I'm like, yeah, baby. <laughs> and I just stay focused. But mm -hmm. just like you said, it's just sad. Like the things that, you know, like you talk about the streets, the different cliques and everything. And me, I just, once you see it, the sad part with me, I built up a, I built up a walk away syndrome. Or, mm. oh, no, I'm about to walk away. Mm. If it's too negative, if it's messing up my peace, 
I'm God. Yeah. It's like your first instinct. Yeah. You gotta listen to that. Yeah, right. you, you go feel it some kind of way. Like, mm, yeah. if you don't, don't this, fight it. Don't, don't fight the feeling. You don't want this free game. <laughs> you don't want this education. You don't want this help. He might want it. You might want it. Dre right. might want it. Zeke might want it. So, I just keep on moving. Yeah. Don't hurt. You know, it's all good. That's one of the things that I admire about Dre is that Dre is literally going to get it in first. He's going to get it. And then he'll be like, yo, man, I just figured this out. Bam. he would be like this. Oh, how long did it take you to figure it out? Man, I stayed up all day, all night. Be like, did you sleep, Dre? I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't sleep. He doesn't, he doesn't sleep. bro. He, but he, he, he dives in. And he's always coming in. You know how some people come into something and they're looking at it one way? Dre literally, off top, just comes in like, okay, how can... And what, is it, what does it look like there? And who's it, how is it looking from this angle? And how is it looking from that angle? And so, you know, Dre, just your, your own upbringing, bro. Um, could you share what, like, what is that motivation? Yeah, I want to touch on some of the stuff that folks talked about, but I'll, I'll answer that uh, as well. But, you know, like I said, I was raised in community, but, you know, part of what sparked me to start Build was I didn't have a dad. I didn't have uncles and, like, all the older cats that were in the hood. I thought they were putting me on, but they were putting me in traffic or put me in a negative situation. So I was even reflecting on where my sons have been offered, you know, scholarships to go to O'Day and aviation and, and Kennedy, you know, for my education, I went to 10 schools between kindergarten and, and uh, 12th grade. So it was like first and goal. And they were like, punt that cat, get him out of here. You know what I mean? So this, and not only that, like the relationships that my son has with Guy and you and Aaron and Larry and John Page, and like all these, Black men that are around, like he has a community. So I know if something happens to me, he's good. Believe that. No matter what. So that's so, so so so. But I was raised up, you know, in community. But then I, you know, steered left when I got into the into the streets. But then there was people like Guy who taught me about business. Like him and his brother, they had ARS records. We talked about this. So then it's given the game and taking, and and I kind of operate in community work the way I I, I do as a parent. Right. You take all the negative BS and try to keep that away from your kids, and then you try to take the positive and amplify it. Yeah. So what I tried to do was amplify the people that were beneficial, Glenn Hubbards, Tim Metcalfs, James Hamptons, Guy Davis, you know, all the people that were beneficial to me, and I tried to amplify that. And that's part of why I got into Parks and Rec, because Rainier Late Night and those types of things were, were beneficial uh, to me. So that's kind of how I try to navigate things, you know, and try to get everybody's perspective and kind of, that's what kind of like we have try to have that flat line leadership with Bill too, where everybody's yeah. voice matters and, you know, everybody's input is important. Uh, but I want to touch on what Ed talked about because it was uh, very important. I called it the term that you're talking about where like these nonprofits and stuff are having the same behavior as the streets is, is really, it's institutional gang banging. Hmm. So people are just banging, you know, it's just, it's just banging on a different level, you know what I'm saying? And really what drives it is capitalism. It's people don't have the resources that they need to really thrive and be happy and be joyful. And so the system sets these RFPs and tools up to where you got to try to be the one and how you're going to, and then you end up finessing each other. And it's really about the money. And that's why I always say money is a disorganizing tool in our community because um, you were on the workshop on Saturday where Corey talked about like money is, the real freedom is money. If you got effort money, then you can, like on my situation, my job got me stressed out. Hey, guess what? I'm going half time. Most people don't have the flexibility to do that. They got to continue to deal with what they got to deal with to make things happen. So the same things happen in these nonprofits and people who, who say they're woke and proactive because at the end of the day, they got to feed their kids. They got to pay their life bills. They have to do all these things. And they may have somewhat of analysis, but sometimes that's an issue too with coming together. So a con, with coming, coming back to your question, coming together is everybody's not on the same page. Yeah. Matter of fact, everybody's not in the same, same chapter or in the same, same book. book. Come on. Right. Book. And so yeah. the analysis be off, which that's part of our socialization with slavery and gangs and crack epidemic and all these other things that are going on, opiate ep epidemic, education, incarceration, all these different life experience, religions, all these different things that have socialized us and separated and fractured us over time. It's hard for us all to be on the same page or in the same book or on the same chapter. So what I tried to do is find people that were somewhat like-minded. We ain't all, we're going to have diversity within what it is because we're all not going to, we're all not going to agree on everything, yeah. but how do we come together and, and value the diversity and value the different mindsets, but we at least got to have 
a similar analysis. We at least got to be putting relationships first because if we're not spending time putting relationships first, then, it, then they're never going to know. Right. If I don't know what you're here for, if I think you're here for this money or I think you're here for this initiative or whatever it is, and that's what it is, we got to be more proactive and less reactive. And what you said when George Floyd, reaction. Uh, somebody gets shot by the police, reaction. Yeah. Uh, some kid gets you know, beat up or whatever it is, it's always react, reactive, which is great. It's an opportunity for people to come together. It's kind of like MLK holidays, right? People go out, thousands of people come out, live the dream, then they go back to sleep. Right, so the same uh -oh. thing happens with <laughs> the same thing happens with the movements, right? It's yeah. people are reactive, but that's how they got us with capitalism because we're so focused on being proactive with making sure our lights stay on, we're paying our rent, paying our bills, feeding ourselves, doing what we got to do, that we don't really have time to slow down and be proactive. I need to be able to be proactive to be able to build relationships with each one of you guys individually, reach out to people individually, rock with people individually. If you're not intentional about doing that, it's not going to happen. And the system knows that's not going to happen. And the less we can be united, the less when, when we need to really come together and really rock, it's not going to stay together because we're just reacting to whatever that situation is. And once that thing fizzles out or they throw a little bit of money in there, there's a the distraction. Mm -hmm. So I think what you talked about is very profound, especially around, you know, like you're saying, I've seen the same behavior from cats that shoot them up, bang, bang, ready to shoot them up, bang, bang on a different level. It's institutional. Gang bang, you know what I mean? And, it, and, it's, and it's worse when it happens up here, though, because all these resources are supposed mm -hmm. to be stopping the shooting my bang bang. Right. right. Like, it's, it's, it'd be tripping me out how people act. I'm right. like, you guys not understand that if, you know, if you get on the same page, we could stop a lot of kids from dying. Yeah. Like, a lot of, a lot of girls from go, going missing or running away or, you know, whatever is going on. Like, it's, it's. So, so yeah. the most dangerous thing is when folks think they're doing good work. That's the part because all these nobody nobody wakes up and says, you know what, I'm gonna do bad work, or I'm gonna I'm gonna be destructive, or I'm gonna be disruptive, right? That's the part that's that's where the socialization and the, the like I said, your analysis is off when you start thinking you're doing good work, but you're really not. You can't see the full field, you know. In sports we call it vision, like you can't see down the court. You're just seeing right here, dribbling with your head down. So, you know, I don't think nobody that I've seen like doing community work in, in the Seattle area region is intentionally doing bad work, but I think a lot of folks are doing bad work because their analysis is often in its overlay with capitalism. It's hard to see down the court when you're trying to pay your rent, when you're trying to keep the lights on, when you're, you know, your kids getting, you're dealing with all these isms that you're trying to fight, you're, you know, your kid's going to jail. You know, your kid may have a gun and you're trying to, you know, react instead of being proactive, you're being react. So I try to set up a situation for my son where I could be proactive. So if something happens to me, the community is going to step in and, and make things happen. So I don't know if that answered your question. Absolutely. So we just want to thank everybody. Dre, my man, Dre. My man. Black power. You already know Ed in the building. LaShawn, Cuddy Hunter, and DJ, Mr. Nice Guy up in here, y'all. My name is Isaiah Anderson, Jr. We thank y'all for joining us at our, you know, barbershop series, Build is what we do 2022 we're gonna keep doing it so 22 is just another year for us y'all we're gonna keep on making it happen any last words dre no thanks to axe on stage the partnership that we have with y'all z uh is dope and uh the black elephant party mr nice guy dancing in the rain media <laughs> and the underground barber who's been chopping me up got the lowest rates in town man you better get on turn, turn yeah. left turn left turn right <laughs> 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 All right, y'all. Peace and God bless. Peace and power.